The trailer did give away too much. Also, you told me too much, but still. I told you, I told you like 15,000 years worth of uh, storyline there, Chief. Let's get to a long, drawn-out Sandy movie. Are we going to get into a long, drawn-out Sandy uh, discussion? Let's go to Dune. Okay, so just to be fair, I did my spoiler-free 30-minute review. I appreciate everyone who watched that. It was a labor of love. We're not going to link it. No, we're not going to link it up here. But it was a labor of love. I I care. uh, Dune is one of my favorite books of all time time and one of my favorite franchises with one of my favorite authors, Frank Herbert. So for me to see this, I cannot judge it fairly. I cannot be an impartial judge. But I did do a non-spoiler review. But in our review today, Noob Noob's going to ask me questions about things that he did not understand about Dune, and I will answer them, which may spoil things for you. So we'll do our normal rundown and then just be prepared. There could be potential spoilers for you, which could also be potential spoilers for the sequel, which I'm I'm hoping, you know, just to be fair, I hate to do it to people, but it's towards the end of the show. So I, I actually may do a, a review of Dune 1984. I actually enjoy that movie too. It's hard for me to remove myself because I'm such a Dune fan. I've read each of the books probably about six times. Like, again, I would consider myself like almost a Dune expert on some level. So uh, the tomato meter has the critics at 83% certified fresh and 91% for the audience score. Uh, I think, uh, why don't you read the critic consensus? Critic consensus is Dune occasionally struggles as its unwieldy source material, uh, but those are largely overshadowed by the scope and ambition of this visually thrilling adaptation. Eh, I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, Audience says, Denis Villeneuve, or whatever his dumb name is, Dune looks and sounds amazing, that it does, and one, uh, once the admittedly slow building story gets you hooked, you'll be on the edge of your seat for the sequel. I, I, sure, I guess. You don't want to find out what happens? No, I do want to find out, but I, I wouldn't say edge of your seat. Yes. Like, I kind of guessed, you saw the trailer and you're like, I know it's exactly what's going to happen in this movie. And then yeah. exactly what you think is going to happen based happens. on the trailers happens. So it's like... Uh, well, maybe the trailer gave away too much. The trailer did give away too much. Also, you told me too much, but still. I told you I told you like 15,000 years worth of uh, storyline there, Chief. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess. And the general story is that uh, Paul Atreides, a brilliant and gifted young man born into a great destiny beyond his understanding, must travel to the most dangerous planet in the universe to ensure the future of his family and his people as malevolent forces explode into a conflict over the planet's exclusive su- supply of the most precious resource in existence, the Spice Melange. Only those who conquer their own fear will survive. Yeah, the whole conquering your own fear seems dumb. I don't, that has nothing to do with it. It's a prayer. It's called the Litany of Fear. Dumb. Okay, so ask away. What questions did you have? Uh, Well, this was a long-ass movie, and yet it seemed rushed. So, like, the entire first half of the movie is, uh, seems like they skip a lot of time. And it, it, like, if you, if if anyone watched this movie, you would think this movie happens in, like, a day or two. Yes, I would agree. I don't necessarily know if that is true. I, it seems like there's, like, time gaps that they don't necessarily explain once they get to Arrakis. Or, first off, why is it called Dune if the fucking planet's called Arrakis? Dune is, like, its nickname. It's the same as calling, like, uh... I'm trying to think, do they call like uh, I don't call Mars Hephaestus, but like you know, some planets might have nicknames. Dune is really kind of the nickname for the planet. Arrakis is its technical name. Mm, seems suspicious. Okay. Also, the the whole plot of the movie, the, the biggest the biggest problem I have with this movie is that uh, spoiler alert, going to Dune seems like a trap, like a bad idea, a bad idea, and the uh, Atreides family. It just willingly accepts it, knowing, I guess, I don't know, they don't necessarily explain that they know that they're going to be, like, betrayed or killed, but they just accept it anyway. Couldn't you just be like, no, thank you? Because the, the god emperor sends you, somebody and is like, do you want to accept well, this? Well, just the emperor does. Yeah, do you want to accept this? And he's like, sure. You I'll have ex- no choice. If the emperor asks you to do something, you gotta do it. I guess. Or else he kills you or whatever. Yeah, but... 
and it'll make you insanely wealthy. That would be like, do you want to be the head of Facebook knowing that Facebook will eventually destroy you and turn you meta? All right. Yeah, that's true. But the whole point of this movie was to take down House Atreides. Correct. So now what the the, the mispronounced name that they... Harkonnen. Yeah, Harkonnen or Harkonnen. Or uh-huh. I think that's how they say it in the, in the Harkonnen, thing. Harkonnen, yes. Led by Dave Bautista, the the, the amazing Beast wrestler. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, they were the ones that were in Dune previously, and they were becoming rich as shit. Yes. Then the Emperor's like, no, thank you. Please leave. For no reason. Uh, because they were... Uh, they were being sloppy with it and they were stealing money like he the emperor kind of knew that he they were funneling money to themselves from that the sale of that like they were making themselves insanely wealthy wealthier than maybe even the emperor so the harkonnen were betraying the emperor they were like skimming okay that's betraying that's bad yeah but they don't like the he the emperor dislikes the atreides more Okay, so that's where I'm just confused because they don't really necessarily explain much of the hatred of the Atreides. They're just like, Atreides are powerful, kind of. <laughs> and then they take over Dune. And then Dave Batista's bald ass devil face mm-hmm. looks angry. He's angry. Yes. And then he's like, We're going to murder them. Murder who? The Fremen or the, the Atreides? The Atreides. Yes. Yeah. Also, the Fremen, which are the, the Dune peoples. I don't understand what part they played because there was a whole scene where uh, Oscar Isaac, which is uh, Lord Atreides or whatever, the, what's his Duke, name from? Duke? The Duke Leto Atreides. Er, yeah. yeah. He's explaining to his son Paul, like, oh, we have land power and air power. Sea power. Sea, whatever. And, and, and that's how we're powerful in Caladan. Uh, sure. Yep. Uh-huh. The actual world of, uh, I guess, where House where Atreides they came is from. from. Yes. And uh, they're like, we need desert power for Dune. Uh huh. And then they don't, they don't do that at all. <laughs> well, he didn't have time to do it. Yeah, he wasn't there long enough to start his desert power. That's why he sent Duncan Idaho to go meet with the Fremen, who is awesome. That's Jason Momoa, by the yes. way. So d- he sent Duncan Idaho to like go native, <clears throat> so that he could earn their trust and help them understand how to work with the Fremen. Yeah, and that, that didn't necessarily pay off that much because they had Javier Bardem come. Who uh-huh. is the leader of the Freeman or Freedom? Freedom. Fremen. Fremen. Uh-huh. And he just spits, and then they're like, spitting is good, and then we all spit. So you don't understand that? Okay. I don't. So water is so precious. So they wear the still suits, right? They talk about the still suits. Uh-huh. They wear these still suits because they recycle all water. You lose like a thimble full of your water. So in the desert, there's no water. Where are you going to get water from? That's fair. So if you live in the desert, so in order to show your gratitude somebody if you spit on their floor that means you're giving you're you're willing to give them water just like if you they don't cry when people die so if you if you give tears to the dead that's something that's profound to them that you're wasting water for something like you're wasting water for someone who died that's a waste of water because like if you die they recycle your body and turn you into water like you're only worth how much water you hold in your body you know, because humans are, are like 75% water or whatever. They don't remotely make that emphasis in this movie. They don't. They're, they'll are they make it a bigger emphasis in, in the next movie. But that's kind of the point is that water is so rare. Remember the scene where they, the guy's dripping water on the plants, on those trees? Yeah. And the guy's like, that's 10 men's worth of water for a whole like week or whatever. And the kid, you know, Paul's like, oh, you should give the water to the people. And he's like, no. This water is for hope. These these trees are worth it to us because they give us hope that we can transform Arrakis. Does that make sense to you? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so that's the point, is that the water is so precious that if he's willing to spit on him, it's like a gift. Like, I'm giving you my water. Okay. Yeah, it's a sign of respect. That's good, Uh-huh. That's yeah. why they didn't kill him immediately. <laughs> that's why uh, Jason Momo is like, do not kill this man. He just gave you a sign of respect. In in our world, we would think that was disrespectful, but that's because we waste a lot of water. We do waste a lot of water. Yes. Yeah. So my, my biggest problem with the movie is that it didn't... The whole point of the movie didn't necessarily need to happen. So it seems like the whole overarching point of the movie mm-hmm. is to kill House Atreides. Okay. And they do that by taking away Harkonnen from Dune and giving it to Atreides. Uh-huh. 
and then I guess sabotaging them to where they're gonna fail. Uh huh. And then immediately just murdering them for failing. I guess I don't. No, know. no, they just murder them because they. Uh... Like they invade yes. Arrakis for like why? What? How is that? Because they just decided they, able... they were gonna kill him. They like they were gonna. So they are there for longer than you think. Uh, they don't actually show this, but basically. They show that the Duke is overcoming all of the Baron sabotages, right? Over time. They don't and make then it they, seem like that. But. They don't because they don't have time for that. But they, but that's what happens in the book is that he's like, you know how he like saves those people from the yeah, space yeah. crawler? That's to show that Luke or that Duke Atreides, like he cares about the people. So the people start working harder for him and they start like actually doing good. And then, you know, the Baron's like, all right, enough of this. Like, I can't deal with this anymore. And then the the Emperor's like, if it's a war between two houses, I can't stop it. Even though he sends his troops. That's yeah. why they say you can't ha you can't talk about the Sardaukar. Yeah, but why not just murder him on his own plan? If you want to get rid of House because of Because I told you, well, okay, they don't explain this at all in the movies. At all. But all there's all these houses. Think of it like feudal... Um, like the Middle Ages, like like a, like feudal kingdoms, right? There's all these like castles, kind of like Game of Thrones, right? There's all these like little lands, the Seven Kingdoms. They're all unified under one king, right? That would be the Emperor. So there's all these planets that are unified under the Emperor. All of the all of them have a kind of Cold War agreement, which is mutually assured destruction. So if one house uses what they call family atomics, so they have nukes, so they could like nuke somebody's planet from orbit, right? But if one house uses nukes against another house, that's not allowed. And they would, all the other houses, the great land strads, that's what they call them in this, they would nuke all that, that. So like if the Harkonnens used nukes against the Atreides, the Harkonnens planet of Getty Prime would be nuked, right? So they can't use nukes. So they're allowed to fight with each other though, but they have to use conventional fighting. That's stupid. So they're allowed to try to murder each other. Yes, they can murder each other through each piddly, other. yeah, through like uh, you know power of their own troops or whatever. Like if a house falls because another house decided to fight with them, and they are cousins. I don't know if you knew that. Like they consider it an, an inside family feud. Like it's like you know if uh, you know two two nations that live next to each other don't like each other because they're the, from the same bloodline. Well, no one's going to stop them. Yeah, they made it a point to say they're killing off Atreides' bloodline. Yeah, well, he, they're also cousins, though. Oh. Yeah. They don't remotely they do, mention He that. did say that. He said cousin. Oh. And he meant it like they are literal cousins. Oh. Yeah. Must have missed that. You probably did. Yeah. You're probably asleep. But couldn't they have just invaded without nukes in their own home planet? Uh, no, because they have their... They had to get them while they were, like, not... They haven't really fortified Arrakis yet. And Arrakis is crazy with the dust storms and all the other stuff. Like, they're not on their homeland. It's like asking you to protect... <clears throat> You know, it's like asking America to protect Vietnam when they couldn't. They could protect America, but they can't protect Vietnam. So then all this was was a giant setup to weaken them. Yes, to, to kill get them. them. Yeah, to get them on a on a planet where they were uncomfortable and un unready to fight back. And but didn't the Duke kind of know that? So why would he? He had no choice. So he, he knew he was basically just it. being set up to be murdered. Pretty much. And That's why he made those. He's like he said to his son, like, "Oh, I might get murdered." Did you notice all the cool stuff about his father, the grandfather, with the bull? Yeah, I did. I noticed the bull stuff. But you were like, "There's bull stuff." Yep, that's it. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you didn't get any of the subtext to this. Yeah, he wrestled bulls. I think <laughs> he greased himself up and wrestled all them bulls. Uh huh. Uh huh. Him and some naked bulls. Yeah, <laughs> it's a metaphor. Sure. For wrestling. With bulls. Yep. The grandfather was very gay with bulls. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Greased up. Um, going for it. Uh, yeah. Okay. That was my biggest gripe. was like, you could have just killed them on their own planet. Why go through this all no, this because their planet has stuff. like a defense. Like he had, like he said, he had sea power and yeah. air superiority. But here, they didn't really have any air superiority. They had nothing. They had no power on that planet. Okay. See how like the 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 Harkonnens knew exactly what to do. They came right in and just like knew, like decimated them because they were unprepared. Except for Duncan, who Duncan murdered a bunch of them. And then yeah, but he died. had to fight them hand to hand. Like yeah. if he had been caught where uh, you know Gunny was, he would have probably not won. Yeah. 
See what I'm saying? And then it's, uh, you, uh, you know, I guess the end goal is to get... Uh, they didn't really focus on the sandworms. But the sandworms are not that important until later, but yeah. That was sad. I wanted more worms. Okay, you always want more and worms. And then is barely in the movie. Yes, I think she has seven minutes of screen time. <laughs> she does. She serves no purpose. She barely serves a purpose in the next movie, so they are lying to you, which I will do a... Uh, there's an article that I want to dispute that I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a, a rebuttal to. They also have, like, the whole witch storyline, like, what the, the fuck? The Benny Gesserit? Yeah. The, that takes a long time to explain, but essentially, uh, these there's, like, the there's all the houses, right? But then, you know, people have specialized. Well, there's these witches, and they breed different people with different people so they get like the perfect human is what they're trying to get and uh lady jessica disobeyed their their what they wanted her to do so she she like betrayed them and had a son instead of a daughter and that's a problem for the benny jesserit they're not happy about it yep because they think they there's they made a like a a savior figure like a jesus oh that's right there's the whole messiah myth and shit yeah there's a whole messiah myth I guess, yeah, I don't know. This was a good movie, but I feel like you need to read the books to be like, oh, this is a great movie. Did you like the score? Yeah, the score. I don't know what the whole... Was there a point behind the whole, like, humming thing? Like, the, the main... Yeah, that thing. Yeah, was there a reason behind that, or was it just I, cool? I think they were just doing it just to give you, like, an alien soundtrack. Like, oh, okay. they wanted it to sound like alien. Because you got to remember, this is, like, this is so far in the future that no one even knows where Earth is. Yeah, they don't remotely mention Earth. They don't know Earth. where Earth is anymore because there was a big, uh, there was a big war with uh, thinking machines that they don't go into at all. But the, essentially, that's the reason why they're in a feudal society is because they had a big giant war with sentient uh, robots. Yeah. Okay. That'd be cool to have a prequel about that. They do. They're their books, but you know, freezing these balls is not like in Dune. Oh my I don't god. Know. Go see Dune. Yeah. If you have Dune questions, come see me on my new Dune channel. <laughs> That's a joke. I don't have a Dune we're channel. We're a monster channel. How dare you? Yeah, we're a monster we channel. We break down monsters as much as this. Absolutely. So, yeah. I don't know. Is that is that it for your questions? Uh, Yeah, basically. I mean... Have I transitioned you properly? You have transitioned me. You've Dune me hard. I have Dune you so hard. You put that sandworm in my butt. <laughs> and let it stew. Yeah. And uh, be sure to catch our full-length audio podcast anywhere that uh, you can get it, like iTunes, Spotify, all those great places. Join us with the infamous Joe Rogan because we're on the same place that he is, except probably better. Yeah. More intellectual not discussions because exactly. we're not a bunch of bitches. Mm-hmm. And we're not if balling. we would have had Sanjay gooped up in here, he'd be our bitch, exactly. not be our friend. Whoever that is. Whoever that is. Exactly. He's from the Netherlands. Probably. Which is a made-up country. <laughs> you get all your sources from us. Follow us on orc underscore you if you want to yep. talk to us directly. Uh, be sure you can catch all these articles and get those sweet, sweet Chipotle codes and all that other good stuff. Exactly. Right on in the links to our stuff here. Oh, wait. Like and subscribe. Why would you do that? Oh, because I will fly to the Netherlands, go to Amsterdam, because apparently that's in the same place, buy a bunch of weed, make brownies... Then fist them into your butt to get you high, and then sexually abuse you in my basement. If you don't like and subscribe. 